You're welcome back. It's still the Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Well, uh, of course, I'm sure you might have been hearing of the uh, latest uh, pieces of information emanating from the war on drugs in Nigeria by the lead agency, the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency. Uh, latest is that uh, they have nabbed about 192 suspected drug traffickers in the southeastern state of Eboing. But the rate of success recorded by the NDLA under the watch of uh, the leadership uh, or the leader, the head of that agency, has made him sort of uh, an enigma among Nigerians. He can also be referred to as a miracle worker or a game changer because of the unprecedented success he has recorded so far. He is a Mohamed Buba Marwa, retired brigadier general, and uh, he's a chairman and chief executive officer of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA. He has already made history while on the saddle with uh, a lot of drug busts and, of course, uh, seizures. Having been appointed to the job, uh, this is a top job, but a dangerous job, by President Muhammad Buhari in 2021. Uh, he's removed at least 5.4 kilograms of narcotics, valued at about 400 billion naira, uh, from circulation. And he stole the illicit substances and cash from being utilized by drug barons for sinister motives. Um, the latest, like we said, is the agency seized the 113 thousand four hundred and four uh four hundred and fourteen rather kilograms of cannabis sativa um this is what we hear from the agency in nigeria's southeastern state of eboi now these are successes nonetheless uh, from an agency that many thought was dead but these are facts that point maybe probably to a worrying picture uh, of the level of hard drug and banned substance abuse and use in the country does nigeria have a drug crisis now we're glad to say joining us um, to answer this and other questions pertaining to the drug situation in the country the director general of kadam this is christ against drug abuse ministry dokun adeleji um, who's our guest this morning uh, mr adeleji thank you very much for your time thank you very much for inviting me all right now we hear of the opioid crisis in the united states of america and uh, recent presidents have had to I don't have a plan or a program to tackle it. Can we say Nigeria has a hard drugs and a banned substances crisis, going by what the NDLE has been unveiling in the past few months? Uh, you know, the, the interesting thing is this is something that some of us have been saying for a long time, that Nigeria has a drug problem, but we have been very resistant in accepting the reality with we used to delude ourselves that we were just a transit nation. And uh, fortunately, or maybe unfortunately, in 2013, we eventually agreed that we're a user nation. And most unfortunately, as I speak, we're a manufacturing nation. We have a crisis. And I'm glad that everybody is beginning to tune into the fact raised by General Marwa that we need to wake up to this reality and do something about it lest we get consumed by it. All right. So I'd like to ask, uh, why is it that we have uh, more Nigerians, a lot of persons in the business of trafficking? Uh, prior to this time, one would think that it should be limited to, you know, just a certain gender, but it's en encompassing. And so you have not just a certain gender, you have, uh, you know, the male and the female, and it's getting out of hand. So what, what's, what's it with the... Uh, increase participation of Nigerians in drug trafficking. Yeah, can, can I just say to you that this is a, just a relative increase that you're talking about. It's been there. It's just because as a people, as a nation, we are always not willing to face the issue. A characteristic nonchalance is there. If Janamara had not come to raise the barometer, of recognition that we have a problem. No, we'll still be deluded, thinking that this is all, the only this to some people. I am telling you, even what we're seeing is like a tip of the iceberg. The drug business is lucrative globally, and everybody knows it. And there is no stopping people from getting involved until we raise an issue of awareness to the point that people begin to realize that it is also of national security uh, proportion. So if we get together on that and work together as a national team, we will get the better of this. But I can tell you 
no matter how much any nation tries, you cannot eradicate it. Well, you can mitigate the effect and then the spread of it across the, uh, across the nation so that we do not destroy our future generation. Mm. All right, but, interesting. But, but, but just um, as a follow-up, Kofi, yeah. uh, before then, uh, yeah. I'd like you to, you know, share your thoughts on this, whether or not you believe that it's true. Because some people are alluding to uh, the fact that the increase or the spread in drug trafficking in Nigeria is born out of the fact that there's a lot of poverty. I mean, there's so much people are trying to survive. It's just another means of, you know, livelihood for a lot of persons. Poverty, and so people are just doing everything just to survive. You know, my attitude to all these kind of excuses are just we are trying to create an illusion. Oh, because there is poverty, or because there is this. Yeah, there is poverty. Nigeria is not the only country that has poverty. And the, the thing is, look, the drug business is lucrative. And do not think that those who get involved in it are poor people. The poor people that you see getting involved are just mere moves. They are just carriers. They are just bearers of this thing. Sometimes they know, sometimes they know, and they get pitchers for what they're doing. The drug business is carried out by people that are formidable in terms of power, in terms of money. Look, look at the gentleman that was caught in the VGC. Is, is that poverty? It's not poverty. But you know, we like sometimes to use an umbrella to cover our lack of action or activity in dealing with circumstances. That's my view. And I've been in this for a long time, so I know and I've seen it. Um, but is characteristic of Nigerians to so find a reason. We, we use crutches to stand, and then so we feel deluded. Oh, not a problem. We are not the only one in poverty. Is there any nation that's going to eradicate poverty? No. The thing is, India is poor. Every other nation is poor. But do we see the same scale of drug trafficking or use? So we must begin to look at the undergarden circumstances that leads to this. And that's the problem with Nigeria. You know, when something happens, we just want to deal with it in a punitive manner. We never sit down to understand the dynamics guiding those processes and how we need to deal with it. I think Manwa is beginning to wake up a reality that we need to look in a different direction from the way we were looking. Uh, I asked you, um, in response to my first, our first question, you said, you know what, um, we do have a a drug crisis. In yeah, the yes, and you said it's been uh, that way for some time uh, now. Mm. Um, mm. I, I, you run a ministry uh, against drug yes. abuse, a Christ against drug abuse ministry. Yes. And yes. I'm sure yes, you, do. you've been doing this for some time. I, I'd like you to please give us a, a sense of um, what has you've seen. What you've seen okay. is on the ground. Mara, okay. We know what the NDLA is doing, and we, we see the statistics, right. but we don't know the details behind. So please give us a sense, an idea of what's really going on. Uh, okay. Around. Yeah, thank you. Okay, L let me just say this to you. Um, we have uh, uh, two centers. One is for undergraduates and graduates and people who work. They come there for a three-month program, and we've seen an increase in that direction. That is what do I mean by that. That is where universities, institutions of Ireland send their students, instead of rusticating them and getting them out of education, they send them to us for rehabilitation. We rehabilitate them and then we certify them. They go back to school and then they graduate. Let's say out of the 10, let me just give you a statistic, six, seven finally graduate and become productive people of drugs. And then we have another center in there where we see people who, be chronically, who have chronic substance abuse disorders. And let me now tell you how this comes. When we want to admit people, we interview people across the nation. We go to Abuja, we go to Benin, we go to Port Harcourt, and then we do the final one in Lagos. I can tell you the last admission cycle, which was just in September, we wanted to take 100 people. We interviewed well over 700 people. So that is just us. And that is those who are able to see of seeking for treatment. Do you know, can I say this to you, that there is no area of Lagos, even in Nigeria, that they don't sell drugs. And I can say this to you without any fear, that even today people buy drugs on the go, that is in traffic, if you walk very closely. And that's why I'm saying that until we come and sit down and understand 
and begin to look at something that is as a public health issue that needs to be dealt with in that manner, not in a criminal sense of it and then act in a punitive manner. If we do that, we're going to drive this on the ground and then people are going to continue in it and many homes will be affected without their knowing. Do you know that people can use drugs at home even at work without their colleagues knowing? That is showing to you the, 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 the ubiquitousness of substance abuse. So I, I can tell you categorically, uh, even from disclosures that Dr. Jeremiah has made, and even from statistics from UNODC, that we are in a crisis. Nigeria has 14.4% prevalence use against 56 globally. That is like triple of global prevalence use rate. So we, we more, uh, in terms of numbers, that is translated about 15 million Nigerians. That was three years ago. Now I can tell you it must be approximated to about 25, 20, thereabout. All right. So, so, so this, this, is is quite, this is quite worrying, uh, uh, Dokuma Adeliji, 14%, uh, almost 15%, yes. and you've given us a very important mm. uh, statistic there, or information, that uh, an important statistic, whether the global average mm. is 5%. Um, you've talked yes. about undergraduates, and uh, in my interaction mm. with some people who are in the space, especially uh, psychiatrists and mental health workers, uh, they've also you know, mm. hinted that um, if we pay a visit to the uh, psychiatric department of various hospitals, you know, like teaching hospitals, mm. general hospitals, you would see that mm. the age um, has been going down and down and down and down. I want you to tell me what's the youngest age that you um, have had to treat. Um, number one, what's the youngest age that you've had to treat, number one. Uh, number two, what are the kinds of drugs that are being you know, used most? In Nigeria. You, yeah, you okay. find. And then uh, no, that's number yeah, two. Number yeah. three, what is responsible okay. for this? Because I saw a report okay. last week, okay. a report last week that says that the uh, uh, the the intake into the uh, psychiatric, psychiatric wards are on the increase because mm. of the mm. economic situation. Economic people are trying to cope. Mm. So please answer these mm. questions. Yeah, the youngest you've seen. Uh -uh. Yeah, the reason okay. and the kind of drugs that are, are being mm. used. Yes. Mm. Now, let, let me take the first one first. Um, in terms of our own facility, we, know, we don't take anybody less than 18 into rehab. The others less than that, we can start with counseling. And then that's why the advocacy is so important that we let people know the dangers of substance abuse. But if I tell you in terms of when we go out to the joint, yes. joints are where yes. people sit down to buy these things and use, yes. I've seen people of about age eight, nine, doing drugs and you know because of the availability we take you into what kind of drugs look let me tell you this morning it's so difficult to have a a a, 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 a complete collage of drugs that people use but let me go like this we have the uh, socially acceptable alcohol people don't consider it a drug but it is one of the most dangerous drugs available the basic is working on classification now so that we can reduce the use Cigarette, and then you come to illegal use like cannabis, like uh, skunk, like um, uh, um, cocaine, heroin, and all the rest. And you know, the danger that I want to emphasize in this category of illegal, there is now something you call synthetic marijuana, which is what is so common today. Something like loud, American loud, Canadian loud, um, Arizona, Colorado, and what people don't know. Those things are not frank weed in terms of weed of my cannabis sativa. What happens in Arizona, what happens in Colorado and Loud is the fact that the component of cannabis is just about 10 to 11 percent. The rest of it is made of herbs and chemicals. And that's why you have seen increase in psychiatric because when they use those things, not necessarily consequent upon cannabis, but upon those other constituents of the uh, Colorado and Arizona. If you hear people say SK skunk, people think it's weed. It is not clear weed. There's a bit of weed in it, and there's a, uh, there's a dry leaf of purple, and then there's also cocaine in it. And so, if you then leave that, let it be legal, and then you then come to uh, pharmaceutical drugs, that is, drugs that can be prescribed, prescription drugs, drugs that can be prescribed not only for great benefit, medical benefit, but people have found that benefit in using them. Something like coding, 
something like Tramador. Tramador today is the rave of the moment because uh, let me say this: in hospitals, we use Tramador to treat moderate and severe cases of pain. But and you know, in hospital, they will never give you more than fifty milligrams, one hundred milligrams for a number of days. But the Tramador that is sold outside that is imported into Nigeria starts from 225 milligrams to 250 milligrams to 500 milligrams to 1,000 milligrams. And these are things produced in other countries and they just import. And then you when they go to derivative, and I also come like fentanyl, narcofentanyl, and fentanyl is 100 times more potent than heroin. And these are things that are available in Nigeria. Those are, and then you know there are some also like injection pentasozine that is given to people, particularly sticklers, when they have their pain. It's so available, they call it for twin in pharmacy that you can get it off the counter. Well, people use it, and then you come, you come. Let me just end with it, and then you have something you call miscellaneous. How can you categorize petrol? How can you categorize glue or a voste or or nail remover or pick latrine? So that's why we call it substance abuse. Okay. And then you then, I mean, I, I can't remember the third question, but yeah, that's I, I, the, I, 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 the, what, the, the reasons um, uh, be behind. Okay, yes. yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, the reasons are multi, multi, multiple at each substance use person comes. Some people will say family, family problems, and the mat matrimonial dissolution. Some will say poverty. Some will say, uh, but generally, availability. And also experimental use and social use, particularly among young people. They want to belong, there's poor self-esteem. They want to be like their friends, peer pressure. So it's so, it's so varied. Some use it experimentally and then they get uh, good on it. And you know, so also some people just want to feel good at parties. Adede G, let's, they let's quickly, you know, look at this as we, as we you know, round it up this morning with... Right. the issue the issue of uh, let's come back to the issue of trafficking okay uh, mm. we know mm. that uh, there's a punishment i mean there are laws uh, that are against trafficking and of course the offense is punishable on conviction uh, with a sentence of mm. life imprisonment when you look at section 11 of the act but my question goes mm. uh, why is drug trafficking still thriving despite the laws that we have against it I will also throw a question to you. Why is armed robbery still prevalent in spite of death penalty? You see, the thing is, people look at benefits. If I carry this thing once, I can make a million dollars. What are the chances that I can be caught? You know, so people play like a, a lottery. Let me do it. If I make money, I get, I, I get it. If I don't make money, they catch me. And then I suffer the, uh, the, the penalty. And also, it allows people to now have a cartel. They then sit and say, how do we break people like Marowa? How do we circumvent all these activities? They then set up different, they, 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 they pursue or penetrate every agency that should be involved. And then you then see business. So each person has a cause. You know, until, as I said to you, until we begin to understand what this does to our national psyche and international recognition, and how people look at us, and also what it does to our national security. And so we sit down tightly, we understand all this, and we don't start fundamental issues, and then you just want to catch them and punish them, we will be missing the point, or we want to ban. When you ban, you create a lucrative market for those who are important. Then they increase the price, and then they become clandestine, and then you can't catch them. And we also must encourage General Mara to do much more. In the sense that, is it possible that politically we can have the backbone to say, have legislature, not only to ban, but to say, everyone who wants to seek employment, everyone who wants to should do test. Not because we want to punish, but because we want to help. If uh, political people don't want to do, what do you think those people that are thugs, that they carry around to be thugs, what do they feed them on? They feed them on drugs. So they're also not scared, they don't want to do anything. We must have the political will as long as together with an attempt to do something. Very it will be lucrative mm. yes. for as long as there's money in it. V very interesting you, you, you saying that it will be lucrative as long as there's money in it and you're advocating mm. for, for not just uh, banning, 
and uh, uh, enforcement of the laws, but also testing. Um, uh, if you want to seek employment, you'll be tested. If you want to run for political office, you'll be tested. But looking at the methods, um, I'd like you to tell us very quickly what you think about the idea of, um, you know, the direction the Western world is moving in, which is uh, on banning marijuana, you know, seeing it as a recreative, a recreational drug, a medicinal drug, you know, and all that, and, you know, soft peddling on that because of the impact on, on the communities and saying, you know, if, if, if there are harder drugs and drugs that do more damage than marijuana and you're not being arrested for that, we're going to have to, you know, reverse the laws and say, okay, you, you can know, take marijuana for, yes. Yeah, you know, there's a way that the world is moving and it's moving to the precipice of destruction. And I can tell you, can I tell you that lately in British Columbia in Canada, they have said that no cocaine is a banned drug, but you can have a certain number of ounces on you. If they find it on you, they will not, uh, they will not uh, punish you. You know, if the world begins to suffer that on this, the consequences will come. And when they begin, look at what is happening in America. A man gets up, walks into a school, kills people. You think it's just because he has mental issues. Where is the mental issue coming from? There are also many associated, and also you know that around Ohio and all those states in the, in the western zones of America, there is a lot of uh, opioids. And you know one thing they found in Colorado, the first state that uh, uh, legalized marijuana. Nobody will tell you that after when they did survey on the on on the on the patients coming into casualty, they found that was an upsurge in the people that were coming in with acute psychosis. But you see, the thing the world is running away from, the world is like to be cultural. We want to be, I, they can do what they choose, but I would suggest as a nation that we be careful the kind of things we do. They may be working for them. It's detrimental here because we have no control even over the basic drugs or basic elements, even prescription drugs. And when you allow those kind of things to come in here and then people begin to justify it, you can use it in the treatment. Do people know that even if you use of cannabis or cannabinoids in the treatment of infantile epilepsy, it is not general. The same result is not got, gotten in every case of infantile epilepsy. So we need to be very methodical and careful in approaching these issues. And we don't just go the global train of people who are debasing their culture and now allowing this thing. They will give all kinds of reasons, they say harm reduction and all the rest. It's up to them. All but right. for me as a Nigerian, I would say we'll be very careful. We right. can't afford it. All right. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Doko and Dereji. One hour will not be enough to exhaust the issues around drug use in Nigeria. But I think the thesis of what you've said is that we have a drug crisis in the country. Doko and Dereji, oh, Director General of Christians or Christ Against Drug Abuse Ministry in Lagos, Nigeria. Thank you so much for your time. And please keep up the work that you're doing. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Have a good morning.